welcome to Inch online fashion designing class. Today's topic is how to make a customized suit or a dress for your pet. So normally we find these suits only online which are quite expensive and we are not aware of the size. So this video is all about taking measurements of your pet and drafting a pattern to the size and sewing the garment. So here I have the finished product. So this is how the suit looks after stitching. So I have a hood attached to the neckline and the armhole. So here there's an opening here. So I have velcros attached for the opening. So it is advisable to use velcros for opening because it is very easy to remove and put it on. With no further delay, let us get started with the paper draft. So for uh, making a paper draft, you need the measurements. So first measurement is the top length. So instead of saying front and back, I would use the term top and bottom because using the term front and back might be a little confusing. So let me use the term top and bottom. So first measurement is the top length. So for my puppy, it is 14 inches for the top bottom length is 12 and half so this measurement is taken only till the genital organ so don't uh, go beyond that because it becomes difficult for them to pee so you have to take the measurement only till the genital organ or uh, uh, slightly above the organ the next is the shoulder measurement which is 5 inches you have the armhole measurement seven and a half inches so we have the across top so the across top is 13 inches and similarly at the bottom it is five and a half inches the neck circumference is 16 inches So first let me start off with drawing a horizontal line at the top edge. So first marking is the length. So I would name this point as zero. I have this paper draft on fold. This is of two layers. So this is on fold. So first we are going to do the top Piece. So this is the top piece. So 0 to 1 I would call it the length. So the length of the puppy is 14 inches here. So I'm going to mark 14 inches. So this draft does not include any seam allowance. This is drawn to the actual size. So you need to cut the uh, fabric with seam allowance. So I would number this as 1. So 0 to 1 is the length which is 14 inches. So this measurement is 14 inches. So next we have 0 to 2. So 0 to 2 I'm going to mark 5 inches. So this is actually the shoulder measurement. So whatever shoulder measurement you have uh, derived, just mark that measurement here. So I would name this as number two. So the drafting for your pet is quite different. It is not like drafting for a human figure. This is quite different. Normally we don't use the term shoulder here, but then here it is quite different. So we have this measurement here and now I'm going to mark a number 5. So 0 to 5 is going to be half of the across top measurement. 
so the across top measurement was 13 inches so I'm going to take half of it which is six and a half inches so I'm going to mark the same measurement throughout six and a half inches I'll repeat it one more time the six and a half inches is half of the across top measurement so that measurement was 13 inches for my puppy I'm taking half of it which is six and a half I'm just going to join all these points and going to number this I will number it as five here three and four so zero to five is equal to two to three and that is equal to one to four so there's no need to draw a neck curve here it is not required I need to just draw a armhole here so now from 3 I'm going to mark 3 dash down so which is half the armhole measurement so the armhole measurement on my puppy it was seven and a half inches so I'm going to take half of seven and a half so half of seven and a half is so we have seven and a half here half of it is 3.75 inches so this 3.75 is actually a too big measurement so I will just minus half an inch from 3.75 and I will make it 3 and quarter I have taken half the armhole measurement and reduced half an inch from it. So now let me just draw a, a, a round armhole at random. see to it it is flat so this has to be flat for at least quarter of an inch it has to be flat similarly here at this point three it has to be flat so let me just measure around the armhole to check whether I have the required measurement So here I have 4 inches which totally makes it 8 inches for the entire armhole. So the required measurement is 7.5 whereas I have 8 inches. So this is okay if you're going to have more is okay but don't see to it you don't have less than the required armhole measurement. So the top drafting is done. So let us do the bottom drafting. So I will just name it as zero this point and now I have to mark the length of the bottom so here the length of the bottom is going to change it is not the same as the top so here the length is 12 and half inches so mark 12 and half inches So this is going to 
be the length which is 12 and half inches okay 0 to 2 is the same as the top measurement where we have marked 5 inches so there's no a difference in marking this measurement so 0 to 2 is the same here which is 5 inches and that is the shoulder measurement okay so now I'm going to mark the across bottom measurement so I'm going to take half the uh, across bottom measurement so the measurement was five and a half inches the entire bottom measurement was five and a half inches so which is uh, two uh, two and three fourth when you make half of it It is two and three fourth. So now join all these points. And again, I will number it as five, three, and four. So just extend this line down. So the width here is different when compared to the top piece. Similarly, I'm going to mark three dash. So three dash, I have taken three and quarter there. So similarly, I will draw three and quarter here and number it as three dash and draw a smooth armhole. See to it. The top and bottom is almost straight for a quarter inch and draw a neat armhole. So if you want you can just check it to see you have the measurement here. So if you feel it is big then just reduce on the circumference. Don't go too wide don't make it too wide and now from 4 I have extend this line down because the length of the bottom piece is 12 and half whereas the length of the top piece was 14 so I am going to measure 14 inches from 0.5 on the bottom piece so I will measure 14 inches on this line I'll measure 14 inches on this line and probably I will name it as 4 dash so from 1 I'm going to slightly curve it off this has to be flat for at least half an inch and you slightly curve it to match it to 4 dash so because you will get a difference while joining the side seam if you're just going to have the draft one little point four. So this length has to be extended to meet the point four on the top piece. So I have taken zero to five. I mean from five I have taken four dash which is 14 inches which is equal to the top length measurement. So now cut the back, I mean the bottom uh, piece. Similarly cut the top piece. So now this has to be cut with seam allowance on fabric. After cutting the draft would look like this. So immediately mention the shoulder point 
and this is the side seam. So don't get confused with the side seam and the shoulder. So similarly the back, the bottom piece. So the bottom piece is going to get attached like this. So this is the side seam and this is the shoulder and this is how the armhole looks. So this 3 to 3 dash is either half of the armhole measurement and minus half an inch from it or you can even minus 3 fourth inch also. You can either take as 3 inches or 3 and quarter inches in case of my puppy size where it was 7 and half inches. So immediately mention the shoulder and the side seam so don't get confused. So we have this shoulder here and the side seam here. So now this center uh, bottom this bottom center bottom piece is a full opening so there is no fold here you need to cut at the center So when you open the draft, you have one piece attached to this side and similarly the other piece on the other side. So let us do the drafting for the hood. So the width of the hood is 10 and half inches for my puppy size so this 10 and half inches is taken from one year to the other years so this half of 10 and half is 5 and a quarter inch so this I have marked half of 10 and half so you have to take the measurement from one year so let the tape uh, uh, end at one year and go to the other year so that measurement, whatever measurement you get, take half of it, which is five and quarter. So this is actually done at random with the, because uh, this is not like a human draft. So now the length of the hood I've taken as eight inches. So now I have curved this gradually almost to the midpoint of the hood. It is almost to the midpoint. So this is a gradual curve and this has to be flat, a flat at least for one inch or one and a half inch and gradually curve it. So this is going to get attached to the uh, center here, center of the top piece. Actually the hood has to extend to the bottom piece also. So now put the bottom piece like this. Transfer the marking onto the paper. So you need to get the hood till the center of the bottom piece. So this you need to gradually curve it down. So take a deep curve, don't take it too shallow, take a deep curve. So take a deep curve. So this is the shape of the hood. Now for the seam allowance. So seam allowance I need at the shoulder. So I'm going to take one inch here. Similarly, one inch at the side seam. 
one inch here at the shoulders and one inch here at the side seam. Uh, since I'm going to do a piping at the armhole, I don't require any seam allowance. Similarly, at the bottom edge, I'm going to do piping which I don't require any seam allowance. So at the top edge, you need to attach the hood. So you need minimum of quarter inch or half an inch. So whatever seam allowance is taken here at the neck circumference, the same measurement is uh, seam allowance is taken around the uh, hood also. So if you're going to have half an inch here, similarly you need half an inch on the hood to attach it to the garment. So here I'm going to do a piping so I will not have any seam allowance. Here you need a minimum of a quarter inch of seam allowance. So the same thing is done for the bottom piece also. One inch, one inch at the shoulder, one inch at the side seam and no seam allowance on the armhole. Similarly no seam allowance at the hemline. On the center of the bottom piece where you have the full opening you need to cut minimum of one inch of seam allowance. So this one inch of seam allowance is for the extension piece where you're going to fix the velcros. So instead of doing an extension and fold separately on the center, I'm just going to extend the seam allowance on the fabric itself and then fix the velcro which makes my work easier. So as you could see, this one inch is extended on the fabric itself on both the sides on both the sides it is extended so this goes one over the other when fixed so when you're fixing the velcro you see to it the rough texture is on the extended piece uh, don't uh, have it on the uh, folded pieces. The soft uh, portion has to be on this side and the rough texture has to be on the other side. So in case if you're going to have it vice versa, if you're going to have this piece here and if you're going to have the uh, soft piece here, so this rough texture will get stuck to the hair easily. So this is quite irritating when you have it the other way. So uh, care should be taken when you're fixing the velcros. Analyze on which side you have to get the rough texture and the soft texture. So when I place both the drafts of the top and the bottom, I have to measure the entire circumference here. So this is the neck measurement so from here I'm going to just measure the entire circumference so this is actually nine and a half inches so nine and a half so when I multiply it it is 19 inches but the required neck circumference is only 16 inches but here we are having nine and a half which is 19 inches so which means the neck will sag down after stitching so whilst fixing the hood you need to fix an elastic here on the bottom piece so here on the bottom piece I have an elastic here so this elastic will shrink and reduce to 16 inches so when I measure so when I measure the garment around the neck measurement I need to have 16 inches if you're going to have more than 16 then definitely this will sag down at the neckline so I will measure from leaving the extension piece I will not include this measurement so from here I will measure and check for the neck round so here I have 16 and half so having half an inch more is okay but then don't have too much of a difference see to it whether you have 16 or uh, a little more than that but not less than 16 or a bigger measurement so fix elastic here you have quarter inch elastic which is available so uh, insert an elastic while joining the side seam uh, while joining the shoulder here this is the shoulder area so before joining the shoulder insert an elastic shrink this position 
I mean shrink this uh, neckline here and then join the shoulder. So let us see how the stitching is done. I have chosen a rayon fabric for making this garment. So this is actually very soft and very thin so I cannot make this garment in one layer. So I'll be using two layers of fabric and I'm going to do quilling. So to make it more stiff I'm going to add this layer of sponge in between the fabric. So put the sponge in between the two layers pin it up in position so do not cut the main fabric to the size of the pattern so only after doing quilling we will cut the fabric with seam allowance to the size of the pattern so place the sponge in between the two layers pin it up in position and now I will stitch on all the three layers so that is called quilling so for quilling you can create patterns either as checks or like diamonds as you wish as a template you can either cut out a chart paper uh, for one inch wide or three fourth inch or uh, one and a half inch as required so now I'll be taking this elastic as my stencil so I will put this elastic like this and I will be stitching on two sides of the elastic so the uh, width of the stitch is going to be even throughout so I'm going to make stitches like uh, diamonds I will use this as a template so complete the quilling and then let us do the cutting after completing the quilling either by using a stencil or you can draw grids on the main fabric and complete. So place the paper draft on the fabric and cut with seam allowance. So seam allowance is given only on the various areas where it is required. And here we have the bottom piece. So here this I needed for the button stand extension. So I have made a hood and completed the edges with piping all around. So this I will attach it to the neck. So I have joined the shoulders of the top and the bottom piece on both sides. And now I am going to complete the armhole with piping. So after completing the armhole, I will join the sides and complete the hemline with piping. And finally, I will attach the hood to the neckline here. So the garment is completed with piping all round, the piping around the armhole and then piping around the neck edge. and the hemline. So this is how the garment looks after finishing. May it be a human garment or a pet garment. All you need is to bill your customer for making the garment. Thank you for watching. Thank you.